Welcome to the video help with physics problems for Physics 1B. In this video we're going to be doing homework set 4, part 1, which is everything under the headings light and optical path length and light and optical fibres. For 1221 students this is questions 1 to 3 and for 1231 students this is questions 1 to 4. Problem 1. The electric field component of a particular light wave propagating in a vacuum is given by EY is equal to 100 sine pi of 3 times 10 to the 6x minus 9 times 10 to the 14t. And for this wave we're asked to find Firstly, the speed. To answer this question, we should recall the wave equation from Physics 1A. In Physics 1A, you saw that the equation for a wave can be written as y is equal to the amplitude of the wave times sine of kx, where k is the wave number, which is equal to 2 pi over lambda, minus omega t plus phi, where phi is the phase difference and omega is the angular frequency, which is equal to 2 pi f. We know that the speed v is equal to f lambda. So if we can find f and lambda, then we can get the speed for this wave. Given that this is a light wave, we would expect the speed to be the speed of light, but we better just check that. So the wave number k is equal to pi times 3 times 10 to the 6, and that's equal to 2 pi over lambda. So this tells us that lambda is equal to 2 over 3.0 times 10 to the 6, which gives us 6.67 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And we know that 2 pi f, our angular frequency omega, is equal to pi times 9 times 10 to the 14, which tells us that our frequency is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the 14. So our speed, V is equal to F lambda, is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 7 times 4.5 times 10 to the 14. And when you solve that on the calculator, you do get 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is what we expect for a light wave. So that's part A. Now part B, we need the wave number. That's K, which we've said k is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the 6 pi and the units for this is inverse meters. Part C, it asks us for the wavelength, we've calculated the wavelength here, we should give it to two significant figures, so 6.7 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Part D, it wants the frequency. We've calculated the frequency here and we need to give it in hertz. So that's 4.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Part E, the electric field amplitude. So the, this is the amplitude here. Since it's an electric field, it'll have units of volts per meter. So the amplitude is equal to 100 volts per meter. And then part F says the wavelength and speed of this wave when propagating in the lens of the human eye which has an average refractive index of 1.396. So the refractive index of air is equal to 1. So this is going from air into the lens. And we've got the equation from Snell's law that m1 on n2 is equal to lambda2 on lambda1, which is equal to v2 on v1. So let's start with the wavelengths. The wavelength in the lens will equal the wavelength in air 
times the refractive index of air over the refractive index of the lens. So the wavelength in air we've calculated is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 7 times 1 over 1.396. And then solving that, we end up with 4.8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. So a shorter wavelength, which is what we expect, as the crests end up closer together when we go into a more optically dense medium. Now we need to work out the velocity. The velocity in the lens is equal to the velocity in air, which is C times N of air over the N of the lens. So that's equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 times 1 over 1.396. And solving that, we get 2.1 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So it's slowing down as we would expect when it enters the lens. Problem 2. In this problem, we're told that light moves through free space with a wavelength of 600 nanometers. It then moves into a medium with a refractive index of 1.5. And it travels a length of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 meters through this medium. In part A, we're asked to find the optical path length, which we're told is given by the physical path length, i.e. the 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 times the refractive index, which is the 1.5. So this is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 times 1.5. And solving that, we get 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. So this is effectively telling us the distance it would have to travel through air to go through the same number of wavelengths as it does in the medium. Part B says the wavelength in the medium. So to do this one, we can use Snell's law. N1 on N2 is equal to lambda 2 on lambda 1. So this tells us that the wavelength in the medium is equal to the wavelength in air times the refractive index of air over the refractive index of the medium. So this is equal to 600 nanometers times 1 over 1.5, which gives us 400 nanometers. Part C, the phase difference after moving that distance with respect to light traveling the same distance in free space. So the path difference will be equal to the difference in the optical path length of the two. So we've got 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6. That's the optical path length in the medium. And then the optical path length in air will just be the 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 times 1. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6. So the path difference is equal to 0 0.8 times 10 to the minus 6. So this is measured in metres. And this is effectively how much further the light would have traveled through air if we're counting the same number of wavelengths. So to find out the phase difference, which is what the question asked for, we've got that the phase difference is equal to the path difference times 2 pi over lambda. So this is equal to 0 0.8 times 10 to the minus 6 times 2 pi and the lambda is 600 nanometers. So solving this, we get 2 and 2 thirds pi radians. So 2 pi, which is one complete phase, and then another 2 thirds pi. Problem 3. In this problem, we have an optical fiber. It has a core with a refractive index N1 and it's surrounded by a cladding with a refractive index N2. We're considering a light ray which is entering from the outside where we've got the refractive index of air which is 1. So the light ray enters at an angle theta and the question asks us what's the maximum that theta can be such that the light ray can propagate along this fibre. So here it is, 
propagating along the fibre like this. Now what would stop this light wave propagating along the fibre was if at this boundary here between M1 and N2 it could be refracted out. So it will no longer be able to be refracted out when the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees. So let's call this angle here phi. We can work out what the conditions on phi are. So we have n1 sine phi is equal to n2 sine 90. This is just using Snell's law for the refraction between n1 and n2. And so we have sine phi is equal to n2 over n1 as sine 90 is just 1. So this will be our limit on phi. Now we need to work out what the relationship between theta and phi is. This angle here will be 90 degrees minus phi, as this is a right angle triangle here. So we can use Snell's law again for refraction between the air and the core material with refractive index N1. So we have N1 sine, and the angle of refraction here is 90 minus phi is equal to the refractive index of air, which is 1, times sine theta. So we have sine theta is equal to n1, and then sine 90 minus phi is cos phi. So what we need to do now is work out what cos phi is. What we can do is we can use this relationship, let's call it 1, along with our trigonomic rule that sine squared phi plus cos squared phi has to equal 1. So substituting in for sine squared phi, we've got cos squared phi is equal to 1 minus n2 squared over n1 squared. So that tells us that cos phi is equal to the square root of 1 minus n2 squared over n1 squared. So now we can substitute this into equation 2. So sub into 2 and we end up with sine theta is equal to n1 times the square root of 1 minus n2 squared over n1 squared. Let's put this inside that square root. So this is the square root of n1 squared minus n2 squared, giving us theta is equal to the inverse sine of the square root of n1 squared minus n2 squared. And that's our limiting case. So that's our maximum value that theta can be. If theta is greater than this value, then phi is going to be smaller and the light ray will be refracted out through the cladding N2. Part B of the question tells us to assume that N1 is equal to 1.58 and N2, the refractive index of the cladding, is 1.53 and asks us to then calculate theta. So theta is equal to the inverse sine of the square root of 1.58 squared minus 1.53 squared. Solving that on the calculator, you end up with 23.2 degrees. And that's to three significant figures, as both of these were given to three significant figures. Problem four. This is a 1, 2, 3, 1 only problem. In this problem, we once again have an optical fibre. It's got a core with a refractive index N1 and a cladding with a refractive index N2. And we're told that different light rays can travel different paths along this fibre, which will cause their arrival times to spread out. So we're to consider two rays. The first ray, ray 1, travels a distance L along this fibre, so this is ray 1. The second ray is refracted off at the critical angle as it travels along the fibre, so that's theta C there. 
and we're asked to find the difference in arrival time. So this green one is ray 2. So we need to find the time of arrival for the second ray minus the time of arrival for the first ray. So let's work out T1 first, the time it takes for this first ray to travel along the fibre. T1 will be equal to the length over the velocity. The length it travels is L. Now it's a light ray, so in air it would travel with velocity equals to C. In the core material with refractive index N1, the velocity will be equal to C over N1. So we've got this is C over N1, so this is equal to L N1 on C. Now what we need to do is work out T2. This will also be equal to the length over the velocity, but this length is increased. You can see here, it travels, let's say, distance x up and then x back down and x again. And so the total distance travelled d2 will be equal to, here is x sine theta c, just using Pythagoras, that's the length of this triangle here. So the total distance travelled will be L over x sine theta c times x. This will effectively tell us how many times it bounces and then this x is the distance it travels during each of those bounces. So T2 is this length, these x's will cancel out, so this is equal to L over sine theta c, so this is L over sine theta c times the velocity which is again c on n1. So this is equal to L n1 over sine theta c times the speed of light. So what we need to do now is work out this critical angle. The critical angle occurs when the angle of refraction in the material with refractive index n2 is equal to 90 degrees. So we've got n1 sine theta c is equal to n2 sine 90, just using Snell's law. And so sine theta c is equal to n2 over n1, as sine 90 is just 1. So we can see that t2 will be L n1. Now sine theta c is n2 on n1, so this will be n1 squared over c n2. And so that's our time 2. So our difference in arrival time is T2 minus T1. So that's LN1 squared over CN2 minus LN1 on C. So we can write this as L over C, N1 on N2, N1, and then this one we've got minus N2. And so that has derived that equation that we were asked to derive. Now in part B, we're asked to evaluate this for the same fibre as in part in problem 3. So that was N1 is equal to 1.58 and N2 is equal to 1.53. So all we need to do now is substitute in. We're told that this optical fibre has a length of 350 kilometres. So this is 350 times 1000 over the speed of light which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 times N1 which is 1.58 over 1.53 over 1.58 minus 1.53. And then solving that on the calculator, we end up with 6.02 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds, which we could write as 60.2 microseconds. So they, that's the answer to this problem.